Hello friends, let's talk about comparing financial time series data visually using charts. So a lot of people, when they chart stuff like in Matplotlib, for example, they will, uh, you know, chart, they'll plot one time series and they'll overlay another one right on top using a different axis. And that's a quick and dirty way of doing it. I've done it many times, but it can be misleading. I'm going to show you a much better way using some cool uh, built-in functions right into pandas, including the percentage change and also the rolling mean and the cumulative sum. So I use all of those all the time. It's fantastic. You just, you know, they're built into pandas. So you just dial up your series dot percentage change and you magically get a percentage change. I really like it. Uh, so uh, as a case study, we're going to follow a recent post on Twitter from Jerome Blockland, which called today's scary Bloomberg chart equities versus manufacturing. And he shows the, uh, the MSCI versus the PMI and they're diverging. So this is what we're going to reproduce in Python. And we're going to come back to this chart in a second. First of all, welcome to the Viral ML Show. My name is Manuel Amunadegui and welcome to another hands-on market analysis with Python episode. So please sign up for my newsletter. It's right here in the middle of the page. You'll get updates on my uh, you know videos. You'll get updates on books, uh, deals on books and classes. And you also get stuff like, you know, my webinars and, you know, and uh, just new blog posts, all that good stuff. Be part of the community. It's always appreciated. So please sign up right here. And this video is going to be classified on, at viralml.com. Go to video channels on your left and finance. So if you're looking for this video or any other my videos on finance, they're right there. And if there is code, it'll be there. You'll find a code there. This video does have source code. It's a Jupyter Notebook extract right here. So, um... Let's go back to this chart for a second. So here we see uh, in uh, in gray, right, we have the uh, the MSCI, which stands for the Morgan Stanley International World Index. It represents some like uh, 20, 30 countries around the world. And you can see it's definitely, you know, kind of, you know, bullish, right? Bounced a bit here, but it looks like he's making a new high since 2015. So it's doing really well. And in blue, you have, of course, the PMI Composite Index, which is the Manufacturing purchasers, purchaser, Purchasing Managers Index. And that's a survey. Every month they send them out to, you know, people who are in the manufacturing world and they give their prognostics for a month going forward and it's been pretty gloomy since mid 2008 it's going down so you know uh so we're going to kind of plot this this divergence so we're not trying to predict the future we're not trying to 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 forecast things here we're just trying to understand ourselves what's going on in the present and i'm going to show you where to get both of these data sets so we can plot them and learn about them and if you're interested in this this kind of thing you know every month the pmi comes out once a month you'll plot it every month right just keep abreast of what's going on and that's the best way of you know of being of being prepared so let's jump to the uh, Jupyter Notebook. It should be right there as an extract. Open it up. There is some explanation about the different functions we're going to look, including the the, the tweet uh, that I'm, we're talking about. We're going to need um, uh, some data. So there's two important ones we need, uh, and they all come from the same uh, website, Quandl. So uh, go get the MSCI World Index. Click on the link. It'll open up a. Uh, uh, it'll bring you to Quandl. Quandl is a really cool site. Uh, it offers all sorts of free data. It has uh, paid data as well, but the free data is really cool because it's oftentimes a lot of government data, and they will, um, you know, they'll clean it up and they'll make it in one nice, you know, CSV, uh, so you can work with it. So you do need an account. It's free, but you need you need to have an account. So I, I highly encourage you to get one. So uh, here it is, right? The uh, MSCI is the World Index Fut uh, Futures. This is the continuous contract. It'll do for for our needs. Uh, simply, you know, make sure you're on the max. So you get as much data as you can, hit download and CSV, and they'll download it to your local machine. And make sure you run that Jupyter Notebook in the same folder or, you know, have a path to that folder. Uh, next, we're going to need the PMI Composite Index. Same deal. Click on there. We're also going back to Quandl. And here it is. And Quandl will have all sorts of the PMI. You know, the PMI is a bunch of different surveys, different values. They have a lot of those values also available there. So I recommend you check it out. So here we have it, right? Um, also make sure you have max, the maximum amount of data. Download CSV and download it to your local uh, your local folder, your local machine in whatever folder you want. And make sure you run this in that from that folder or do like what I do, have a path that, that points to your, your financial data. So we're going to load a whole bunch of uh, libraries in memory. I'm just going to pass on this. Here is my path. Let's go to the interesting stuff, the MC MSCI. So uh, I'm going to walk you through this one because I do that with all of my uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Whenever I'm bringing in data, my financial data, I do this all the time. Because we're talking about time series, and time series are basically plots, uh, uh, you know, uh, data points over time, right? So you have to make sure you do a few things. So first of all, you know, you load it in memory using pandas dot read underscore csv. I pass, I, I pass my path. So uh, because I have mine, you know, sorted by date in, in folders, the date, dated folders, basically. We cast that date to a date time. It's an object out of the box. We don't want that. We want a date time because Panda, uh, sorry, Matplotlib likes to work with with the date times. It does a lot of cool stuff if it knows it's a date time. 
Um, we're going to look at the min and max date so we can see how much data we have. It goes from 2013 to 2019. Pretty good. And then we are going to uh, sort it. This is this is very important with time series. Sort it uh, by date in ascending order because we're going to be doing rolling averages, percentage change, all these things. You always want it to start with the oldest date and work its way to the present, not the other way around. Otherwise, you'd be cheating. You'd be using the the the, the, fu the future to to you know model the past. We want to use the past to model the future, right? So always sort everything in ascending order because some things will come. Uh, some sites have them in descending order by default. Others ascending order. Who knows? Uh, this is a way of avoiding that. And we're going to look at the data and look at that. It looks beautiful. Uh, we have uh, more data than we need. We have a date, more features than we need, and we have the settled. We're just going to use these two. Same deal for the PMI, same site, so same format. And we're doing the same thing, casting to date, uh, of course, uh, sorting by date in ascending order, et cetera. And look at that. We have data going back to 1948. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to work with that data because we're going to be comparing both. So this is going to be our the smallest date, right? It's been the, the, uh, whatever starts intersecting, they start intersecting only in 2013. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm also bringing the Hang Seng uh, index uh, because it's very it's very correlated to the MSCI, and I'll show you how I found that out. But I, you don't need to download this one. This is from uh, Yahoo Finance. Uh, I'll just show it to you. But let's look at uh, comparing uh, the uh, MSCI and the PMI. So if I go back to uh, the tweet, we see that it looks like it, start, it looks like it's mid 2015 or the third quarter of 2015. So I played around with it and I came up with this date as a good date to try to replicate what uh, what we see in the chart in the tweet. So what I do is um, I, I create a cutoff date and I take a copy of both data sets. That allows me to not ha always have to reload them from file, re-clean them, uh, do the data wrangling. I just take a copy like that. These are temporary copies of this of these, of, of these and it allows me to cut them up, play around with them. And every time I want to go refresh it, I just have to do you know pull up another copy. And then in this case, I am going to cut them. I'm going to cut them by uh, anything that before 2015, I don't want. I'm throwing in the garbage. So all both data sets are going to start in t by 2015. And uh, then we're going to plot them. And this is the kind of the typical quick and dirty. Everybody does this. Everybody does it this way. We, you know, we, you create a, a matplotlib figure. You call but that's done by calling plt.subplots and I pass it a figure size because it's going to be perfectly formatted for uh, Jupyter Notebooks. I love this black background. I've been using it recently, so I'm now I'm using it everywhere. It's very easy to see the chart. Basically, you know, you color the, the, the background bl uh, black, and you can, you know, then you know, chart things in yellow or in uh, in white, and it really it really comes out really nicely. Uh, so in the first axis, we're going to put uh, the MSCI. So it's going to be plt plot uh, the date, and we're going to go with the settle settle price. I'm going to plot this one in gray with a li line width of two, and I'm going to label it appropriately. I want the grid. I love to like the grid as well, and the legend. We're going to position it, and we're going to do a title called MSCI World Index versus the ISA Manufacturing PMI. And I'm going to open a second axis, meaning that so one is going to have this y axis, the other one will have the other y axis. And you simply do that by calling ax.twinx. And that means this one is going to be on an independent sc uh, scale and a price scale. And this is the uh, same thing, date first, then the PMI, and you know, a kind of a blue color. I had to kind of poke around, poke, poke around to get this bluish color, um, the line width two, and uh, you know, the label. And so let's see what this looks like. So here it is, right? So let's see how we're doing comparison-wise. Uh, it's starting to be correct. We, we can de definitely determine that we have the same data, right? This is pretty similar. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is the PMI is a monthly data point, so it's nice and smooth, while the uh, MSCI is daily or, or whenever the market's, you know, uh, five days a week. And you can see how jaggedy it is. So if we want to try to get to this, we're going to start using the first pandas function. This is cool, called the uh, the rolling average uh, right here, the rolling, right? So same deal. I'm pulling up my, I'm making copies again, cutting at the same, this time I'm cutting it a little earlier. Um, and uh, we are going to do uh, all still, we're going to be working off of separate axes. So in the first axis, I am now going to take the price. You see, this is what we did before, right? The MSCI, MSCI world index uh, underscore data frame underscore TMP settle. And I'm going to call, so this, this is your series, right? This is your time series. I'm calling dot rolling. And I'm going to give it a window, a 20 period window. That means it's going to take every 20 periods. It's going to calculate that average and, you know, distill that to one point. It's going to move it one, 
calculate the average, this led to one point. So you're gonna have this rolling, what's called a rolling average, a rolling mean of 20 periods. And the min period simply says that, you know, if all you have is one period, the first period, use that period. If all you have is two periods, right? Even though you're trying to do a 20 period moving uh, average, just use those two, right? Don't We don't wanna have nans or not numbers or blanks, right? Just use whatever you have. And eventually when you have 20, start using the full 20 window. And you give the mean of that of those 20 values, and we're gonna plot that. Of course, we do the same thing. Uh, no, sorry, you don't have to do that, the, the, the PMI, right? Because the PMI is monthly, it's already smooth. We only need to smooth out the MSCI because it's uh, a daily. So I'm gonna go with a 20 period, right? There's about 20 uh, trading days in a month. So because this is monthly, we're gonna try to see if this works. Wow, look at that. Look how the gray is now it's a lot smoother. Uh, and I think it's pretty good. This is a little bit of a brighter color. I should have gone with a light gray. Um, actually, let's see if we can do that. Oh yeah, even better. Yeah. So we're starting. So this is more or less like uh, like like uh, the chart that Jorlin posted. The only difference is here. You see, right we, at the at the beginning of the chart, the earliest date, they're really kind of together, right? And that's one thing that's very important to do. And if you're just overlaying uh, two uh, two time series on their own axes, you have no idea. Uh, basically, the way it's doing it is going to kind of look at the the topmost point, the bottommost point for each uh, time series, and it's going to try to fit them that way, right? So it's a bit random. In a lot of cases, you can want them to start at the same point. So that's what we're going to do next. For that, we're going to have to join them together. That's super easy. We have two data sets. Uh, we're going to join them using uh, the, uh, where is it? Uh, the PD merge, so pandas merge function. And that's basically going to take those two separate data frames and bring them into one data frame. Those are a few things we have to do. Remember the MCSI is a daily uh, time frame and the ISM PMI is a monthly time frame. So I'm gonna join them using a left join. That means take everything on the left, the MSCI, and try to fit uh, everything from the PMI there. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, empty cells, right? Empty values. And so that's what it's gonna do here. And then we're simply gonna fill those with uh, the uh, with a, a forward fill, right? So we're gonna fill them with a forward value. It means if one day is 20 and you have nothing for the next two days afterwards, you're gonna take the 20 and forward fill. So next two empty ones are now 20s, right? That's what we do here. Uh, if there are NAs, we remove them, that there shouldn't be. And we take a look at what we have. And now look at that, right? So this is daily data. So the MCSI changes every day, um, or some, you know, sometimes it doesn't change, but most of the time it changes. Well, the PMI won't change, right? Because we're using that forward fill. So it's gonna be, you know, uh, it's gonna have 20, chunks of 20 uh, periods with the exact same uh, value, and that's fine. So now let's take a quick peek. I'm gonna look at them. The difference here is now we're not gonna be calling the uh, axis twin X like we did here, right? Here we're calling, when I'm plotting the second time series, I'm calling AX.twinX. I'm not gonna do it here because we just joined them together. Okay, so we're ready. Uh, let's see, I'm ready to go, good to go. So that's the joining, and now let's take a peek at this. Ooh, what happened? Look at that, so we joined them, but they're on different uh, scales. So we're joining everything on one single Y axis, and of course, you know, the, the MCSI is a lot bigger number than the PMI. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's very hard to read. So what do we do now? Very easy. We now call another function the a percentive change. So I'm going to create. So now we now we have that that data frame right together the underscore df which contains both the PMI and the MSCI. So I'm going to create a new feature for each the MSCI settle underscore PCT change percentage change and same thing for the PMI. And what's the percentage change? It looks at one point in time. Uh, figures out how much of a percent it has changed to the next point. And, and just, you know, if it changed, if it moved 50% up, it's going to be 50%. That's all, 50. Uh, if it moves 100, it'll be 100. If it moves down 50, it'll, it'll be negative 50. It ignores the history. It's just looking at that one little change. And what does that do? Well, it kind of it kind of generalizes the data. It puts everything on the same percentage scale and moves away from whatever currency or value that index is in. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to present, I'm going to plot these percentage changes right here. So uh, same chart as we did before, we're all going to be sharing the same Y axis. And now we are doing, right, um, plotting the MSCI settled percentage change. And here we're plotting the PMI percentage change, right? So pretty st very straightforward uh, right here. Uh, what happened here? It's not happy about something. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to run them. Hold on. My bad. Let me run them in memory. And here. Oh, look at this. So these are actually the raw percentage change. So this is the percent change. As you can see, the percentage change really, it, it revolves around the zero line. That's why it always comes back 
to, you know, it goes up and down the zero line constantly because it's just looking at the change from one point to the next. Then it forgets entirely about the history. Next point, what it, what, the, 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 it's basically just looking at a window of two, two periods. So that's why it looks a complete mess, completely unusable, right? So what do we have to do? We have to bring in the cumulative change. So I'm simply going to add. So basically what we did, we have the percentage change dot to come sum, right? Cumulative sum. And that's going to take that percentage value and add it uh, uh, and keep keep taking the, the keep adding them up, right? Take, taking a tally or summing them as they go along. And what does that do? Well, it's going to take the percentage change and we're going to start more or less looking like uh, the normal price, right? This is the normal PMI, the normal MSCI. The difference is they both start at the zero point. This is key, right? This is the key. This is the whole reason we're doing this. So they, even though it looks exactly like the normal charts, the only difference is the PMI is a little bit jaggedy because it's a, a monthly value that has been kind of stretched, right? But here they all start at that zero line, okay? So really cool. Uh, uh, and now you can start really seeing the difference. So you see the difference here? Let me just scroll back up. Actually, no, let's leave it here. Let's do this. Let's do this versus this. Right, so here it really looks like they're kind of you know meandering together the whole time. Here a lot less, right? So it's it's it, and this is a lot more accurate. You just have to make sure you start at the right starting point, but it's a lot more accurate because they're sharing now the same percentage scale that's been uh, where you you're using the cumulative sum. So but they're they're kind of the same scale, right? We read, so we are definitely seeing even it's more pronounced that the uh, global equities are are a lot stronger than the PMI. The PMI is going down. The global equities are still going up strong. So very interesting. You know, you can make up your own conclusions about the, the fundamental analysis here, but this is a better way of doing it. So I want to show a quick, uh, um, a quick tool here. So I was looking for, um, uh, one one of the things I wanted to do was because the um, the the MSCI the NSCI only goes back 2013 nothing early I want to see what other proxy could I use that would be resembling the MSCI so one th one thing you can do that's really cool is go to Google Correlate unfortunately it looks like it's closing down pretty soon it was a great tool so you simply put whatever you want MSCI World Index you do I want to do a correlation search uh, for a monthly time series and it returns how correlated other values are right. So of, of course the MS, MSCI World Index is very correlated to the MSCI World. It's not very interesting, and that's why I pulled the Hang Seng, which is the, the, the like the most separated thing. That, and I could actually get we can actually get the the Hang Seng data fairly easy, and that's what I did. So I pulled the Hang Seng data, and where am I? I'm right here, and I plotted it all together. And uh, actually, let's plot it from 2014 here. Give me a second. Let's go. And look at that, it's pretty cool, right? Look how correlated the index is to the uh, global equities. So the global equity is made up of 28 countries, though, um, you know, it is very correlated to, you know, the, the Hang Seng, which is an extremely strong, you know, uh, index, right? Uh, so, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of sad that this this whole uh, this whole Google correlate is going away because it was pretty cool. You could correlate anything, and it's really kind of giving you an eye into uh, Google searches uh, through uh, the window of a time series. So pretty cool. Anyways, so the you know play around right the the the, the Jupiter extract is there with the notes. Uh, I, before I end, I like to plug some of my stuff. It's kind of like the, the sponsor of the show. And I just recently opened a school called the Viral ML School. So you go to viralml.com, go to the, the blue button, learn, and you'll see my different tracks. I have currently three tracks, machine learning track, uh, market analysis track, and the uh, entrepreneur track. But the one of interest here is the market analysis track. So click on there. And uh, there are a bunch of classes. The first one is entirely free. So take that one. You're going to do what we just do, but a lot more. We look at the S&P 500. We look at uh, plotting it. It's really, really fun. And then this is the, the, you know, if you want to take the full class, we, you take this is the called the market analysis with Python class. And we go in depth into the S&P 500, the VIX, the Case Shiller, the unemployment, Bitcoin, the inverted yield curve, etc. And you also get for free. Uh, you know, my book, uh, The Little Book of Fundamental Indicators, which, you know, kind of covers, they both s cover a little bit uh, a similar, they, they intersect a lot of stuff, uh, and on the fifth week, you get the book. So if you if you like this kind of stuff, if you like, you know, diving in, getting your own answers to fundamental questions, to technical questions, uh, which I, you know, I highly recommend you do, just because it's the, it's the way to go, you know, get your own answers. In this book, I show you where to find all the data, usually free data, how to work it in Jupyter. Notebooks, there are many different ways of looking at the data, and kind of coming up with your own 
you know, your own answers to a lot of questions. Remember, the, the stock market is the, the fastest news service in the world. If there's anything going wrong anywhere or changing anywhere, the stock it will be reflected in the stock market before you hear it on the news. Thanks for watching. Thank you.